Today we've got a nice functional inequality from the Vietnamese National Math Olympiad. So our goal is to find all functions from R to R, so the real numbers to themselves, such that for all real numbers X, Y, and Z, we have the following inequality. So 1 half times the quantity f of xy plus f of xz minus f of x times f of yz is greater than or equal to 1 fourth. Now maybe the first interesting thing to notice here is that the role of x, y, and z are not symmetric here. In fact, the role of y and z are symmetric, and by symmetric I mean we could swap y with z and we would have the same inequality, but x is sort of playing a role on its own. Notice we've got this f of x by itself. That's the only time we have f evaluated at a single variable within this inequality. And then f of x, y, or f of x, z, well, x is in both of those. So that really motivates us to maybe set y and z equal to 1, and that'll collapse this to an inequality that just involves x. So why do I say 1? Well, that's because we'd like x times z to be just x, and you know we've got to use 1 for that. Okay, so let's do that. So let's set x equal to x and then y and z equal to 1 and see what that leaves us with. So now our functional inequality will be 1 half f of x plus f of x and then minus f of x times f of 1 and this is going to be greater than or equal to 1 quarter. And now what could we do from here? Well, notice we've got one half something plus itself. So that means that's just gonna turn into f of x. We've got an f of x here that we could use to maybe factor out. And that's gonna give us f of x times the quantity one minus f of one is greater than or equal to one quarter. Okay, nice. But now let's look at this and notice that if we had our kind of best case scenario at this point, in other words, like if we knew what f of 1 would be, that would be good. And why do I say that would be good? That's because we could get an inequality just involving this like function itself. So how could we somehow figure out what f of 1 is? Well, we could at least get an inequality involving f of 1 if we further set x equal to 1 in this. And then let's just see where that goes. So let's do that. So let's set x equal to 1 in this thing that we have just like been playing with. So let's see, that's gonna give us f evaluated at one times one minus f of one is bigger than or equal to one quarter, but that's gonna be the same thing as f of one minus f of one squared is bigger than or equal to one quarter. This might seem a little bit hard to work with, but in fact, it's actually not too bad to work with. We can, in fact, move some things around and then factor this out. So moving some things around will give us zero is greater than or equal to f of one squared minus f of one plus one quarter. But this is a polynomial that we can factor. We can think of the variable as being f of one. And in fact, this factor is like f of one minus one half squared. That may not seem super helpful, but let's look a little more closely and we've got zero is greater than or equal to this thing squared. But anything squared itself is always bigger than or equal to zero. So that means that we can put a greater than or equal to zero on the right hand side of this as well, just given the fact that this is a real number squared. And like I said, any real number squared is non-negative. But that means we've pinned this quantity between zero and zero, which means it's equal to zero, which means f of one minus one half is equal to zero, which means f of one equals one half. So let's bring this value of f of one equals one half up here. And we have f of x times one minus half is greater than or equal to a quarter. 
And let's really quickly notice that moving things around again will give us f of x is greater than or equal to a half. And we get that just by maybe subtracting one half from one and then multiplying over. Okay, so we've simplified our inequality, you know, by plugging some things in to this f of x bigger than or equal to one half. Now let's see what we could do by plugging some other values in. So far we've determined for all real numbers x, we know that f evaluated at x is greater than or equal to one half. And we achieve that by plugging in x and one into this inequality. Now let's think of another number that might simplify this inequality. And another such number would be zero. And that's because anything times zero is zero. But just as we did before, notice that y and z are playing a symmetric role, but that's not symmetric to x. So it kind of makes sense to fix x and set y and z equal to zero and see what happens. So let's do that. So let's set x equal to x and we'll set y equal to z equal to zero and see what that does for our functional inequality. So that's gonna give us one half f of zero plus f of zero for this term minus f of x times f of zero. And we know this is greater than or equal to one quarter by our given inequality. Now, where could we go from there? Well, notice that this will be just f of zero. We've got an f of zero here, we can factor that out. So we've got f of zero and then times one minus f of x is greater than or equal to one. And now looking at this, we'll see that we can play the same sort of game that we did before and that is further fix the number x at zero and then we'll have something which we can hopefully use to argue a certain value for f of zero. So let's set x equal to zero, and we'll have f of zero, one minus f of zero is greater than or equal to a quarter. But that's the same inequality that we had kind of in the middle of our calculation with f of one. And let's recall that that led us to the knowledge that f of one was a half. So that means that f of zero is also equal to one half. Okay, great. So just to reiterate some things that we know so far. So from before, we know that f of one is one half. And then from this right now, we know f evaluated at zero is one half. We also know that f of x is bigger than or equal to one half for all x. So it really looks like f of x may be the constant function one half. And in fact, that'll be the case. And we have enough on the board to check that right now. Let's loop this value of f of zero into this inequality with kind of a free variable x and see what we get. So we'll have one half and then one minus f of x is bigger than or equal to a quarter. That's the same thing as saying one minus f of x is bigger than or equal to one half. But then moving some things around there, we see that that's the same thing as saying that f of x is less than or equal to one half. So I'll box that in green because we can play it off with this other thing boxed in green. So we know simultaneously that f of x is bigger than or equal to one half and f of x is less than or equal to one half. So given that f of x has to be bigger than and less than or equal to one half, that means that our solution is indeed the constant function f of x equals one half. So that's our final solution is f of x equals one half. And then plugging in this function back into our stated inequality, we'll see that that holds. Now I've done a number of questions on the channel involving functional equations, which I like quite a bit. So maybe check out the one that's on the screen right now if you'd like, and that's a good place to stop.